Hello there, Mark Sutter, of HurricaneTrack.com here. It is Wednesday now, the 10th day of April 2024, and after a couple of weeks on the road, starting with the IBHS Hail Conference and then the National Hurricane Conference and then the National Tropical Weather Conference and then finally the Eclipse, wow, it has been an exhausting but an, just an exhilarating time, uh, and I'm back in the office. Like, really? It's all done? Now what do we do? Well, we're going to focus on hail. And you go, what? What does he mean, hail? We'll talk about it, in case you don't know. And, of course, hurricanes, because we are hurricane track. That's the primary focus, but, you know, branching out, getting to do some other stuff. I'm a weather geek at heart, but hurricanes are still, of course, the main focus. And then we're going to talk just one more day about the eclipse. I know some of you are probably sick and tired of it, but I want to show you a couple of things and thank a couple of people, and then we will be done with it, at least for now. It was very moving, though, let me tell you. Good to be back with you. Let's get started, and uh, we'll start with the eclipse, shall we? That was the path of totality. Yes, a lot of people down in this part of Texas kind of got dealt a bad hand. It just depended on where you were. It was not ideal. I knew that, not like way in advance or anything, but I knew it in enough time to change my plans. I was in South Padre, and then we were going to go up here to San Antonio, my family and me, and then up here to Kerrville, but nope, it didn't look good from the cloud cover perspective over here. So instead, we flew from Houston up to Boston, rented a vehicle, and uh, drove up here to Holton, Maine. And it was absolutely worth it. I'm going to zoom in, in in here and show you Holton as it pops into view here. Very close to the center line. The actual center line was just a little bit more to the north up here, something like that. So we were in Holton at the Walmart. The people there were absolutely fantastic, uh, hosting everybody, so to speak, RVers, amateur astronomers, all kinds of people coming out, a nice crowd. It was just perfect skies. Everything worked absolutely flawless. Getting my family up there, all the rental car stuff, the hotel bingo, Airbnb bingo. We did it all without any penalties or cancellation problems and we didn't have to irritate anybody. We did everything within the guidelines and we made it happen. And that's hard to do. So for those of you that got to see Totality, you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't seen it yet, even 99.97 is not the same as what I'm gonna show you. And I know you've seen pictures on social by now, but I'm gonna show you some from a few people, all right? First, this is from Jesse. He got to see it. Greg Nordstrom and his wife saw it. They were down in Fredericksburg in Texas. Even Josh Morgerman went up into Oklahoma or somewhere around there, and he saw it, and he was, like, amazed, and he sent me a text message, uh, just one of the most incredible things he's ever seen. That's um, obviously Jesse's iPhone. This is the back of a camera, as you can see here, his Nikon. And then there's the moon starting to carve away at the old sun, and it progresses. There's the diamond ring effect. I don't know if this is the first or the second, but whatever. But that's totality. Again, these are back of the camera shots. He's going to process them later. He had his DSLR up there, his Nikon. And uh, let me show you a couple of things from my uh, perspective here. This is the um, real-time video. I put this up on Twitter. And let's just drop the volume out of there. So this is it. You can see the shadow coming. There's the sun. This is from my GoPro. Um, the sun's disappearing. There comes the shadow. You hear the crowd. Let me rewind that. Just incredible to see that. And then, just as quickly as it happens, it's over. It was 3 minutes and 20 seconds. And then you get the sunrise coming back. The diamond ring effect, it's all very, very rapid. Look at that. It comes back pretty darn amazing. And then people got the heck out of there real quick. I'll show you one more. This is a time lapse from a different GoPro. And uh, people started leaving just as soon as it was over. They wanted to get on I-95 and get the heck out of there, which I understand. Got places to go and things to do. But this is the progression. Look at how the colors change. Whoop! How fast that was. Absolutely incredible. Let's rewind it. Look at that. This is amazing. Gosh, it was just wow. I can't wait to figure out where I'm going to be for the next one. 
and no, it is not going to be 44 years or whatever it is. I'm going to go to wherever I need to go. It's happening again. I just got to find the time. Anyway, uh, these are some views from Jesse, my view up there. This is from Alex. Again, I got to like email him or message him on Twitter and say, how do you say your last name? I'm thinking it might be Spawn, A-H-A, I don't know. Anyway, amazing pictures from Alex. You can even see some details of the moon in here. Just an incredible effort by Alex to get to the totality area and amazing photos. Oh, the solar prominences, we could see those even with the naked eye. It looked like little pink. Well, you see it there. That's what it looked like, except it was in the sky way up you know, high instead of zoomed in like this, of course. However, my favorite is from Benjamin Williamson. I don't know how you pronounce that mountain there, but this is in Maine, and you can see that mountain as you drive up to Holton. Look at that. I'm going to message Benjamin and ask if I can get a high-res copy and print it out. He can even sign it or whatever. That is totally fine. I would like to have one in my office. I'll pay a hundred bucks for it. I mean, seriously. Wow. That's what it looked like. That is, to me, the best representation of what it really did look like in person, even from a Walmart parking lot. So, huge shout out to Benjamin here. I don't know this person, but look, he's being followed by Alex and Reed Timmer. Come on. And Jack? Wow. That's pretty good. Way to go, Benjamin. We all appreciate it. All right. Moving on along. While I was gone on all of this amazing adventure stuff, this happened, and you know about it, but I'm just reminding you. Phil Klotzbach, Dr. Klotzbach in Colorado State putting out their forecast. Other forecasts have come out, even before and since, from a variety of agencies and individuals, and the consensus is we are going to use up all of the names on the list. There's 21 of them, and we're going to have a huge ACE score. That is the quality of the storms, and we're going to have a lot of hurricanes. So we need to start getting ready. That's the bottom line here. We're going to talk about that more and more in the coming weeks. What does it take to make you ready as an individual, as a community, maybe even as a business owner? I don't want to just drop this dire stuff on you and then leave you, you know, like, well, what do I do now? Especially if you are new to a coastal area. We've got to start talking impacts. Be ready for those impacts as we move forward, and our efforts to do so will be increasing in the days to come. So let me just do this. I've done this little magic trick for you a few times in the last few weeks. This is the April edition. So this is roughly four years ago. It's uh, about a day behind. Well, I pulled it out of the archives, but this one is from, well, look, they do match. That's good. So this is April 8th, 2020, and we all remember what was happening then. And that's the sea surface temperature profile for the Atlantic Basin and the uh, certainly the Eastern Pacific there. And this is what it looks like four years later. So again, I ask, if this is what gave us 30 name storms, what is this going to do? And it is very similar. And that, my friends, is why most of these climate models are picking up on us having, experiencing, whatever you want to call it, dealing with, a very active hurricane season. It is very similar to matching up fingerprints and finding a suspect, right? It is similar. It is research. It is analysis and the computer models help. And the profile here is of a very busy season ahead. So again, in the coming weeks, especially as we get into the latter part of this month through May, May is a good month to prepare. Let's talk about it and let's give you some hope. Hope is not itself a planning tool, like you can't just hope everything away, that can be part of it. Give you a little bit of glimmer of hope that there is stuff we can do to mitigate damage, to reduce the stress, and to be prepared for when maybe everything is lost. How do you deal with that? It is important to address all of the extremes. You know, like, well, a little bit of preparedness, maybe I'm a college student renting somewhere, what do I do? Uh, all the way up to I'm a homeowner or a business owner, I lost everything. How do you handle that from the financial side to the mental health side? And we're going to get some experts in and we're going to discuss it because it's very important. I've got my hands full, don't I? I do. And this is the next part. Today officially begins my newest venture to study hail. The hail project, nice original name, 
but what else are you going to call it? I didn't want anything goofy. Uh, so it's just very simple. The Hale Project, it commences today. I'm still in the office, so what does that mean? It means that it's just the official start. But this evening, I'm going to begin a podcast series. I'm going to be recording a session um, with Dr. Ian Giamanco, or Giamanco from IBHS, and uh, we're going to talk about all things hail. It's going to be a great casual conversation. That will be available on Friday to the general public, and then tomorrow, Thursday, to our supporters on Patreon that help to finance all of this amazing, amazing stuff. So the hail project... What are we going to do with it? Just to remind you. You're like, wait, this is the hurricane track guy. Why are we talking hail? Because of these. That's a supercell. The winds are coming. They're backed. They're turning. You get the upward motion. It twists. It's amazing. Wow, a rotating updraft. And within that updraft, you get these huge hailstones from time to time. And most people flee them. They run. Storm chasers, most of them don't want to get their windshield smashed. Homeowners don't. They don't want their roofs smashed. They don't want their cattle smashed. You see in the, 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 the thing here? Last year alone, last year, $60 billion in insured losses from hail. Yes, $60 billion. So you're darn right. I want to study that phenomenon. How are we going to do it? We're going to use these guys right here. We're going to take GoPros, and we're going to record what happens at point-blank range, using a specially modified vehicle that will be ready Thursday. Again, another shout out to the folks that are helping to crowdfund this. It is expensive, but it's going to protect the vehicle. I'll wait and show you on Friday. i got to pick it up Thursday, then I'll show you on Friday. A momentous occasion, because we want to be able to drive under those. This was near Brady, Texas, courtesy of C.J. Morgan, who was with me. And we want to see the hail instead of run from it. When we see this... And that is an unfiltered photograph. That is your hail core in there. And that is some, and you can even see it up in here. Remember Twister? Greenage? It's a thing. And it is in the supercells. And we got to study it. And we're going to do so in some, in some amazing ways. Look at that. This is near Kim, Colorado last year. Wow. So I want to drive in front of one of these, park the vehicle, and let the hail rain down. And then what are we going to do? We're going to measure it. We're going to stick temperature probes in and get temperatures from the outside to the core all the way down to what's called the hail embryo. We're going to do the measuring with the calipers. We're going to catalog. And if we find some really big honkers, chunks of it, you know, like amazing sizes, five, six inches or whatever, maybe even four inches plus, we have a special cooler that we're going to have, actually a freezer, that we're going to put it in, shrink wrap the thing, and then take it to the nearest weather forecast office and record it. And you never know, we might find a record stone. All of this, when possible, is going to also be live with two cameras running, one from the dash, so you can hear everything that's going on where we are, and then one up on the roof of this specially modified vehicle looking backwards, and there's going to be a host of experiments up there. I'm telling you folks, we've done it for hurricanes, we're going to do it for hail. The idea sprung up about a year ago. CJ remembers it well, and here it is getting ready to happen. I'm so excited, and it'll be a multi-year project, many days out there getting into these supercells, interacting with folks that are out there as well, and uh, see what we can do to at least shed uh, a lot of light on hail, you know, and, and do some interesting experiments along the way. Again, tonight I'll be interviewing uh, Dr. Ian here, and we're going to talk about hail how to mitigate against it, what IBHS is doing to study hail. Oh, just an exciting conversation coming up, and I'll publish that. It'll be on YouTube. It'll be a video, the dual panel video, me on the left, him on the right, or whatever. And then I'll extract the audio for it, and we'll make it a podcast, and I'll try to get it on every platform. I just got to figure out how to do that again. It's been a while. All right, speaking of hail, you better be ready for it today. There will be some in the moderate risk area. And uh, there's the tornado threat, pretty substantial. And then the wind threat, also substantial. Yikes, that pink. And then there will be some large hail, though not as prominent as the tornado and wind threat down here. So you guys that are out there chasing these, be careful, all right? Ah, it's just that deep south stuff bothers me. I am much more comfortable out through this area 
uh, myself, uh, just to be straight up about it. Anyway, this is today. Make sure I don't turn this recording off. This is tomorrow. Shifts to the east a little bit. Not much after that, but then we all have seen it coming up on day six. More shenanigans out there. Might go out there for this for our first expedition, but I think we're still just a little bit too early. I get the vehicle tomorrow. Um, I got to do some prep work, make sure everything's right, and then it's probably going to be around the 18th, 19th, 20th that we have our first expedition where I'll drive out into the first event, multiple days, whatever it is, leave the vehicle at Weatherford, Texas, at one of our great supporters' property. His name is Jeff, and um, I'll just fly back and forth as needed from there. We'll talk about this more in detail later. By the way, there will be a separate set of videos all related to the Hail Project on a daily basis when we are on these expeditions. So there's a lot to keep up with with us here at Hurricane Track. I should rename us Hurricane Track Weather, because that's pretty much what it is, right? And it's because of you guys, seriously. I couldn't do this without our folks on Patreon, and certainly my relationship with Fox Weather helps as well, no doubt about it, but the crowdfunding, the building of equipment, the ideas, oh, I mean, it's just amazing what you can accomplish as a community. If you'd like to be a part of it, we'd love to have you. Patreon, get the app, search for Hurricane Track, and of course, we are on social media at these wonderful spots, and it's all uh, at Hurricane Track. In fact, I should just do that, just get a nice, you know, the at Hurricane Track thing, we call that the handle, and just put that on the back of the vehicle. We've got a QR code on there, but we should get just the handle, at Hurricane Track, because you can do that on most social, social media. You know this, I'm telling you what you already know. Anyway, this is how you follow us, and uh, we'd love to have you like, sh subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And finally, one more shout out to Patreon. I'm telling you, this community is fantastic. We've been doing this since about 2016. It has helped us to grow and innovate. You get access if you help invest in what we're doing to our Discord server and our live cams when they're up. Though the Hale Project is going to be all public because it's new and we want to involve as many people as we can. But mainly in hurricane season, all those cameras we have out there, you get access to that. Exclusive first access to podcasts the interactive maps, and more. Oh, yes. Busy, busy, busy. I just got done being busy. I'm going to have a brief down period, and then it's going to get busy again as we study hail and hurricanes, but we're done with the eclipse for now. All right? As always, thank you for tuning in. I do appreciate... Oh, you know what? Almost done, but I didn't want to forget this. I got an award. I try not to boast if I can help it, but when your peers recognize you that's Lou Fincher it's a crystal so it's you know it's like a ghost image so to speak Lou passed away a little over a year ago great friend to a lot of people in hurricane education and awareness so the National Tropical Weather Conference dedicated the Lou Fincher Broadcast Award in Lou's name and um, I was the recipient this year last year the very first recipient was Eric Salma down a longtime friend of mine down in southeast Florida so we miss Lou greatly, but he has brought a lot of people together to really push hurricane awareness and public education. So big thanks to the NTWC for recognizing my work, and it's all of us. I'm the face of it. Pretty or not, I don't care. I love what I do. I love the crowd that helps to make this happen. And with that, I'll bid you a good day and tell you thanks for tuning in. I'm Mark Suddeth from all of us at Hurricane Track. Good to see you again. I'll be back with you on Monday.